to Go Live TV, the future in your hands. The only multicultural IPTV station that brings communities together. Over 2.7 million people have already watched. Go Live TV, anytime, anywhere. Hello, everybody. Welcome to History Makers TV. I'm your host, Derek Schneider. It is such a privilege to be talking with you today, to be having you join us wherever you're watching from. Uh, you know, we're just so amazed by what God is doing in our ministry at this time. If you didn't know, October 28th to 30th, I want to remind you, History Makers Experience Training is coming up. You've probably heard about it by now if you follow our program. If you didn't see any of our episodes all about what God is doing through this incredible result-oriented machine, feel free to check out our YouTube channel, History Makers uh, TV, and you'll be able to go there and see some of the discussions we've had surrounding this, as well as historymakersacademy.com, all the information that you need to be able to register. You can join us online or in person October 28th to 30th. It'll be life-changing for you. Now, <laughs> the moment I was really waiting for, uh, and I have to tell you, it's a bit of an impromptu, unplanned episode today with my wife. I'll tell you why. I was laying in bed last night, and I said, I want to have my wife on TV with me tomorrow. And, and I didn't even tell her that until, <laughs> <laughs> until this morning. I said, I said dear, would you, would you come on TV today? Maybe we'll talk a bit. Because people are always saying how inspired they are by our story. And I want to say something to you. The Lord has blessed me with a woman of God. I know that men can flatter their wives on camera, from the stage, all of that. But the truth be told, I don't think there's anybody like you that I've ever met. And, and I've traveled a lot of places, and I just never met anyone quite like Sarah. Her name is Sarah. Her family call her Ara. You're from the Philippines. Where in Philippines are you from before we get into how you got to, to Canada? <laughs> So first and foremost, yeah, this is an impromptu, and I was like, oh my gosh, but yeah, this is a great opportunity to talk with my husband at this moment, and yeah, I'm from Philippines, and I'm from the island of Mindanao. And it's called Cagayan de Oro City. Cagayan de Oro City. So all the Filipinos out there that are watching, you probably know where that is. <clears throat> and you grew up a little bit about you because I just said to everybody how amazing you are. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but you grew up in a pastor's home. Yeah, so my parents are pastoring, so I grew up as a pastor kid. Yeah, you know what a pastor's kid is. I know that journey <laughs> as well. And you have siblings, successful in business, military, uh, ministry. Your brother, my brother-in-law, I'm happy to say, shout out to Kuya Stephen Cabanlet. Uh, he just won an award. What was the prestigious award that he just won? So he won <laughs> Filipino Outstanding in Soldier Category. Ah, okay, okay. So now, you and I met not that long ago, and you remained single up until what age? Was it 29 or 30 we met or what? <laughs> I guess it was 28. Uh -huh, or, uh -huh. yeah, or 29. No, I'm not good in numbers. <laughs> I hate math. You, you remain single, but, but beautiful Christian 
talented. I always said that, you know, you were really known when I would tell people as the darling of, of Kegeyende Oro, really. Everybody respected you who knew you. Why did you remain single? Why didn't you rush into marriage? You know, normally people are trying to get married in their early 20s. What was the reason? Well, at first, um, one of the things is, yeah, relationship with boy and girl was really one of my weaknesses. But then when the Lord um, really talked to me deeper, where he opened up my, um, you know, calling. And so that thing's like, I need to give up. So giving up like five years waiting time i remember so that's the time you, you surrendered you told the lord for five years i am not going to date anybody yes that's right i was able to date but with a chaperone <laughs> with a chaperone <laughs> this will be very new for some of us in western society with a chaperone which i also experienced as we uh, be began our courtship it was like real courtship now when we met, though, you have to tell this story because I think I was coming to Keggy Andoro to do a training. And, and you know how God is. I had received invitation to go to Philippines, and I had just told the Lord, Lord, I, I give up. I don't know who's for me. You have to choose that person. I had been traveling uh, and you meet people along the way. You're speaking at different Christian conferences. So you think, well, this woman's a Christian. She seems nice. This woman's a Christian. But how do you really know who is for you? Because you don't even know what you're going to be doing 10 years from now. How do I know? And I came to a place after season after season of striving, making mistakes, where I said, Lord, only you know. But one thing's for sure, I'm going to stop any long-distance relationship because I need to get to know the person. I need to know this. And I had it all worked out in my own mind. And I received an, inv an invitation to the Philippines and I declined. I didn't reply. <laughs> I didn't reply because at that time I was receiving invitations, lots of places. I said, I don't want to go to the Philippines. But then a little later on, I got an invitation to go and speak in Hong Kong and flights covered and all of this. So I thought, well, Maybe I should take up that invitation and hop over to the Philippines. And that's exactly what happened. And we held, I think, a training there. We held the History Makers training there. What were your first impressions uh, that this training was coming and we met <laughs> at the <laughs> restaurant? Did you have any first impressions? I don't know if I've ever asked you that. <laughs> wow, it brings back memories. Um, <laughs> What I remember for sure, I was just like, okay, I'll be doing coordination, I'll help. And because, like, there's another conference that I'm supposed to be. So. At the conference in Manila, right? That's G12, right. G12 conference. Yeah, so I'm supposed to join that. But yeah, it ends up also that I was able to join both the History Makers experience and the conference that I'm going in, G12 conference in Manila. But, but you heard how intense it was going to be, and you almost <laughs> didn't want to come. Isn't that true? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So, but I guess it's really the Lord's way. And that, that first night where, yeah, the coordinator, Pastor Caleb, invite us for a dinner. So I remember I saw you first at the table, but no one introduced us. But we're just like, oh, okay, hi. Uh, no, not even saying hi. Not even hi. Yeah, Nothing. I remember yeah. not even yeah. saying hi. So as the meeting starts that night, so okay, I was just so like glued up, like you were sharing about history makers and what will be the training, you know, all these things that you mentioned, how will it go? So you're preparing us, the coordinators, and the one who will be um, leading on that three-day um, experience. So I was like, okay, wow, this might be so interesting. But you didn't, you didn't think I was handsome or something. <laughs> there was none of those thoughts in your mind at the time. But, but for me, I, I have to tell you something that just comes back to me now. I maybe never told you this. But when we met at that restaurant, or at least we were in the same room, I remember checking myself like to make sure I looked 
I d- and I didn't even consciously, I wasn't consciously aware of that. But by the time we were in that coordinators meeting at the hotel after, I noticed you were so studious, you were taking notes. There was something that was impacting me. I found you really impressive. And then I think we didn't see each other until Sunday after that. Uh, and, and by that time, uh, we met at the church again, I think it was. And I walked in and something stood out to me was you were bringing fruit and arranging the table and you told me, you spoke so directly and I liked it. <laughs> you told me, you need to stay in fellowship with the pastors and so you sit here and I thought, wow, she really understands ministry. And what was your impression on that Sunday? Yeah, I was just like, um, that Sunday during uh, that uh, service time, so we were invited in this church, right? And I was just like, when you came in at the door, it was like just sparkling. Your, <laughs> I, I guess it's the start. Like, um, your teeth was so like, wow, what? My teeth. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful teeth and a smile. Your smile was just like, thank wow. you to my dentist. <laughs> So that's the one like, oh, wow. And you were like so formal. And then I was shocked that you um, asked me my name and you are and you shake my hands. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> wow. So and that that's a time that, yeah, I, I think I lead you to the uh, tables where we are going to have lunch. And yeah. And then we, we ended up having the training. And throughout that training, you were coordinating, and I noticed more and more qualities that were so impressive. And I think I didn't realize there was attraction there. But on one particular evening, and I had never had this before, uh, I went back to the hotel room, and we had had some interaction by then because we we were doing ministry together without really realizing it. We were thrust into this situation. I felt dizzy. Uh, as if I, someone had given me a glass of wine or something, I had this dizziness, like, like a sense of lovesickness or something. I, I don't know what to call it, but I had dizziness for, for this woman. And it was a feeling I had never had before. And I knew there was something erupting inside of me for you. And it wasn't until the third day of the training I, something something broke open for my life. This season, long season of singleness, loneliness, pain, everything that, that goes on in a, in a single person's life. I remember that morning in the hotel room, I was in prayer, preparing for that third day where we have the meeting with Jesus. And uh, I find myself weeping, and I'm under travail. I'm in intercession. And I'm assuming it just means this, this meeting is going to be incredible today. So I phoned ahead to our coordinators there and said, you know, we need to rearrange the schedule because God is about to move. And he did move. But it was in that meeting where I felt I had a revelation. Not just an attraction, not a feeling of love sickness or whatever, but a revelation that this was my wife. But then I need to, to prove it practically. But... I had a revelation in that meeting, and I know something happened to you in that meeting as well. What was that on the third day of the training? What happened? So on the third day of meeting, it was just like I really never expect that, but during the ministering time on that encounter with Jesus, so like I start to speak in tongues, pray, and I remember I just kneeled down before the Lord, so I feel like my feet were shaking and to kneel down and pray and that's the time that I start to see this vision like wow what is this and it was so clear to me I mean the vision was so clear that the Lord is showing me that I am wearing this white bridal beautiful gown and yeah my family members all my siblings my nieces and my nephew and even my parents are in the front row and the next 
vision that I see is like Derek Schneider. So it I'm was your it. face. Yeah, yeah. You were singing at the altar and you were the groom. And I was like, wow, this was like just the things that I prayed for. Like someone could sing a song for me while I am walking on the aisle. It was so clear. And after that vision, I just continually ask God. And I never tell someone, not even my parents. Now, and you never told me, thank God. If you would have told me I had a vision, I thought, oh, it's one of the... <laughs> I would have thought you were trying to make something happen. But you never said a word. Yeah, I never said a word. So I keep it to myself. And I consulted God through my devotional time. Mm -hmm. Every morning, I asked God, Lord. So I wrote down that vision, and I asked the Lord, what does this mean? Because I was not really expecting or pray at that time to be married or to see who will be my husband. You were focused on ministry. I, I, you, yes. I had heard about you that you were so <laughs> serious about discipleship. You were preaching at that time. Yeah. yeah, that was the time that I was really into, you know, um, enjoying the ministry time where like, it's just like so busy for me to do something. So I was not really thinking about my lifetime partner. But then... I remember that I always pray for that, you know, as part of my prayer time. Like, Lord, I don't want to reach this age that I will not be married. I want <laughs> to get married. You didn't want to be single <laughs> in ministry, right? You didn't feel called to, to singleness. Now, you had also prayed for something, although, again, thank God nobody told me. But you had also said... What was it that, Lord, one of the signs you wanted, you had petitioned God that he would share the same birthday as you? Yeah, that's right. So I remember when I was just like attending this youth camp. And so one of the speakers like encouraged us, um, pray for a specific thing that you wanted for a lifetime partner. So one of the qualities there is, okay, I wrote down in my prayer notebook, um, will it be possible to have a lifetime partner who will be, uh, wait, who will have the same birthday as mine? <laughs> See, this is why your mom, <laughs> in, the le in the leaders' meetings, they, they said, Pastor Derek, you're not married, and, and, and how old are you? I said, well, my birthday is February 11, 1981. And your mom, who's a past also a pastor, sitting next to me, made this noise, like, oh, <laughs> she, <laughs> something like that. And she quickly covered her mouth, and, and she never said anything. But, of course, we share the same birthday. So nobody's telling each other this, but God is individually revealing it to each of us. And so while you were praying and God was speaking from the Word, I had the privilege of going up to the prayer mountain, Warrior's Haven, prayer mountain in the Philippines. It's a, it's a place of prayer and fruit trees. It's like the Garden of Eden. It's owned by her family. And that's an incredible story of the miracle that took place in one of her relatives being healed of cancer, leukemia, which gave birth to this prayer mountain in Philippines. And uh, so I'm up there praying and the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to you a word, and, and if you don't mind, it'd be great if you could share it. But, but what he said to me, it was so simple, and I had never seen this portion of Scripture before this way, but every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, but every good and perfect gift. This was my inner conflict. Lord, there's a lot of good choices I could make. But what's your perfect will for me in this area of relationships? And I thought, dear Lord, could there be a person? Nobody's perfect, but could there be a person who's perfect for me that you already know who that is, even though I don't know? And God began to speak that it was you. And then I really scared my parents when I sent a text <laughs> from the airport on the way home. I think I've met my wife. <laughs> And they were concerned that long distance, you don't really know her. All of these very valid, <laughs> very valid questions. 
But uh, what did God say to you? How did you know? What was the revelation he gave you? Uh, yeah, so that morning of my devotion, I remember I was in the park because I was already in Manila at the time waiting to for our conference to start also. So I have this like um, word from God in my devotion in the book of Genesis chapter 28 where it's very clear the Lord spoke to me because that's the time like, wow, because I really asked God, Lord, that vision is he, my husband. So you didn't just take the vision yeah. as if it were. Because, you know, so many things can influence that. You looked for the vision, but then from the word. That's right. What happened? So in that passage, it's so clear where the Lord uh, talked um, that uh, personally to me that he's, he said that I will send you out to a place wow. where you are strangers. Wow. And specifically, it says to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. Wow. I will bring you to that place. And my version, it's called like abroad. Speaking of Abraham and Sarah. Yes. And wow. it says there, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and I will bring you back to the place where you are. <laughs> wow. And that time, I remember I was really weeping, like, wow, Lord, you are there. You spoke to me, and I was waiting these things. And I always hear these stories, you know, like hearing stories like, you are praying for a lifetime partner, consult, the, consult God, consult the Word. And it's really true. Once you're so desperate for it, so the Lord will really speak to you through His Word. Yes. And after that, I called my mom. And so that's the time that I start to share my vision and everything. And so I, gave, I asked for a counsel. And my you parents... You asked your parents for counsel. That yes. is interesting. I asked my parents for a counsel and help. Like, this is the thing that I saw, vision, and I asked God, and this is the word. And my parents just blessed me and all these things. And I remember that's the time that we continued to, we continued to talk and yeah, connect yeah. to and, each other. And, you know, it, it was real courting because it wasn't just that I would get to know you. It was that I would get to know your family. All 700 of them. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> but really get to know your family. And things were done in, in public. You know, there was chaperone usually. And it, it was just something totally different than what I had experienced in Western culture. We ended up courting unto marriage. And your, your accuracy <laughs> was uncanny. Because had we not married when we did, COVID hit. Nobody could fly anywhere, but we got married on Prayer Mountain, on that Prayer Mountain. It was just one of the most gorgeous weddings I had ever seen, let alone been a part of. And there I was singing up at the front as you walked down, and it was raining every day. There was supposed to be rain that day, but you had prayed. You also prayed with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I was a little bit, well, it could still rain at weddings, you know. But you were so sure every day you said, we need to pray, even when I was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so that's why I asked you, like, can you agree with me in prayer up until, the, uh, up until our wedding day? Because I know during February, it uh, always, like, end up like raining and it's a rainy season and when it rains up the mountain like oh my gosh it will be so muddy and it will not be so exciting because we are really planning to have an outdoor ceremony and then the in the indoor reception so I was like Lord because this is from you you have given all these promises you have given all these things and so at that time also um you know a, wor a, a word of God, like, I mean, I can hear his voice, like, okay, why not pray just even quick prayer in a day up until the end? So just, just coming into agreement Yes, quickly, that's right. You know? Yeah, yeah, wow. 
You know, so then we get locked down. So it's extended honeymoon, just to make a long story short with our remaining minutes here. We get locked down. We enjoy a year of honeymoon together, living there in Philippines, which ended up producing our wonderful daughter, Shiloh Grace. And now another one on the way, a boy on the way. And we looked to get a visa for you to come. It was time for me to go back to Canada. We, and I decided to stay until a visa. I just didn't want to leave my wife. And we applied, I think, three times. And the third time we got it and we flew home. And I'll never forget seeing you standing in that passport control line knowing that they can still deny you. And when they sent you through, I just was moved to tears because we had made it to Canada. I wonder if you could speak for a minute on a woman trusting God for the right person, the right partner. You would say, and I saw this on your social media, to wait is to trust. What does that mean? So from that uh, where to wait is to trust, uh, that's really the word that uh, the Lord gave me from the moment that I gave up uh, my relationship five years before I got married. So um, the Lord spoke to me like, you know, being in love with Jesus first. And uh, by being in love with Jesus is, you know, to wait is not only to trust, but obeying or being busy of what you are called to do being busy in your calling yeah being oh. busy of your calling and so it's very true like we do have different callings in our life mm -hmm. either you might be in ministry you might be in business you might be like everywhere god has called you but you know the lord is directing us to be um faithful and obedient mm. in a way where um are we really trusting God? Are we really serious about waiting? Because the Lord wants to develop us. For me personally, the Lord devel is developing my character, my relationship with Him. And once I go and dig, go deep, and I mean like dig deeper with Him, and you know, everything in your life, every aspect of your life, the Lord is just like directing. This is what Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says. Like, seek, seek ye first. first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. So the word like all these things shall be added unto you. So Including nothing. Including a husband or wife. Yes, right? that's yeah. right. So nothing shall be subtracted. Wow. So like, wow, okay, I'll embrace nothing this. Su nothing shall be subtracted. I like that. <laughs> I never heard that before. Everything will be added, not subtracted. Yes. So. <laughs> wow, no loss. Only and addition. radical obedience. Wow. That is very, very important. Oh, my dear. In the last three minutes, what if you could look into that camera, what would you say to encourage single girls out there because I think it's profound what you said, that you didn't just sit and wait. Many women are thinking they can't do anything until they get married. That's their sole desire, as good as that is. But you were active in ministry. What would you say to girls who are single right now? Yeah, for those of you who are single and praying like, is my lifetime partner um, coming? Uh, just, you know, um, obey God have this radical obedience, and continue to just uh, see yourself first, like try to have your self-evaluation. And Lord, or ask God, Lord, can you help me direct the way that you have called me to do? And, you know, in any way, the Lord will sp speak to you. And every promises that he told you, Continue to just embrace that. And that is what I do to myself. Like I embrace every promises. I go back to my previous devotion. I go back to my previous prayer. And, you know, the Lord is just there for you. And he's the God of surprise. You'll never know. One day, just like what happened to me, I never thought I'll be. The God of surprise. <laughs> yeah. So God is the God of surprise. And. You know, just hold on and be in love to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. 
So well said, honey. Thank you so much for being on the show today. And of course, I'll have you back. <laughs> we have a lifelong time to do these things together. But if you enjoyed this, share it with somebody you know. And thank you so much today for tuning in to History Makers TV. And, uh, and we're just, we pray God's hand upon your life as he adds and not subtracts. God bless you. We'll see you next time.